Hey everybody, welcome to episode 17 of You Cannot Rewatch, the Evangelion Rewatch Podcast. I'm David. And I am the... I'm Dylan. Alright. I was going to say the Dylan, and I was like, wow, I don't know why I was going to say that. <laughs> Alright, off to a good start. Uh, so we're talking about episode 17. Uh, make sure you know you're familiar or have rewatched it. And uh, do we have anything we need to go into before we get into the episode? Mm, I don't think so. I haven't heard any news recently. I don't think so either. I haven't heard anything different or new about the uh, the Blu-ray thing. So not sure if uh, there's been any more info on that. If there has been, uh, let us know because I haven't heard anything else about it. So email in or whatever. So uh, this is the uh, first of a two-parter. Um, and uh, it's uh, it's the one where, for anyone, who, just in case you didn't rewatch it, this is the, the two-part saga where Toji becomes... Uh, the fourth child and is going to pilot uh, Evangelion Unit three. Uh, three, right? Yeah. Uh, no. Yeah. 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 Cause Oscar's Cause, two, and four just is destroyed. Four. Four was destroyed. Right. Uh. So. Uh. Yeah. This is just the first part. So we don't see the outcome of that in this episode. We just see that Toji has been selected. Um. Real quick. Uh. I kind of forgot in this episode that they like make it a little bit of a mystery about who the pilot's going to be. Yeah. Because I don't even think about that going into the episode just because I already know who it is. So it was, like, towards the end of the episode when they kind of were, like, they sent Toji to the office. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is supposed to be a surprise about who the child is. <laughs> like, they, it's just, it's weird rewatching it because it doesn't play at all um, on a rewatch. That got really weird for me, too, because I texted you earlier asking, like, what episode we're on. Because I started watching episode 18. I was like, wait a minute. I feel like something's missing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I still had the mindset of everybody knew Toji was the pilot watching 17. So it was really weird hearing people talk. I was like, wait, don't they know he's the pilot? Yeah. So, yeah, it's weird. Um, okay, uh, back to the opening of the episode. Uh, I kind of forgot how this one opens. It actually opens with Misato being questioned by Sele right. um, about what happened in episode 16. They ask, uh, were the angels trying to communicate? Were they interested in the human mind? And they mentioned that the angel tried to take Ava into itself. Um, so this is, I think, really interesting, especially um, the first time people watch the show, just because, you know, I think we're still at the point. Uh, if you're watching this, if you had been watching this for the first time, I think that this would still be at the point where you just imagine the angels are these random monsters. Right. Um, and we're really starting to see, like, there's something more complex going on. These aren't just crazy animals. These are some kind of sentient life forms. And now they're attempting to make a mental uh, connection to a human being. Um, and also apparently trying to absorb Ava into themselves. They also mentioned that, uh, will this have something to do with the predicted 13 angel and on? Um, I'm not sure what that means. I assume, you know, in the Dead Sea Scrolls, there's obviously some kind of prediction about right. everything past the 13th angel. I'm not entirely sure what that prediction is or i don't think they ever go into that specifically no, but i do think that's what that means like wondering just, if this offset the schedule yeah well i, I just wonder if the prophecy kind of uh says that the angels will like become more sentient and more connected because they also say that like uh the angels have worked independently thus far but now there seems to be some right. kind of link between each one that's and something, de they definitely seem more intelligent that's something i think would be really cool to have like maybe in you know, 4.0 or whatever, just to have what the Dead Scrolls see, like the Dead Sea Scrolls say. But that's like yeah. probably never going to happen. I'm No, I'm sure it'll never happen, but that would be really cool. I, yeah. I wonder if like, maybe, I haven't looked into this, but you know, there's a lot of um, uh, like documents and pictures from the production of the show. Um, I wonder if anywhere like, because I assume when they were working on the show, at some point they wrote what these, what these imaginary Dead Sea Scrolls yeah, in sure. the show would say. So somewhere there must be like a picture of that mm -hmm. or, or something. That'd be really interesting if if anybody if anybody knows any information about that. If that is a thing. I'd love I to hope, hear about that. I hope the Dead Sea Scrolls just a really meta term they came up with. It just refers to like the storyboard. <laughs> the what? Just refers to the storyboard. Like it's real meta about it. Oh yeah. <laughs> um it uh have you ever looked at the the real Dead Sea Scrolls? Yeah, actually I, I, I is that I, obviously, it's not predicting that, like, giant robots are going to come and attack Earth, but, like, what's... I have no idea what the actual Dead Sea Scrolls are about. Um, I tried to figure out what it was, but it takes more from, like, the Hebrew religion, which I'm not familiar with right. at all. So, when I tried... Like, I spent so many times, like, looking up new links and stuff from Wikipedia page to Wikipedia page. I honestly can't 100% tell you what they're about. It's really confusing. <laughs> I, I, was just, if, I was just wondering if, like, obviously, they don't... 
have any information about the show, but I was wondering if there's any kind of relevant information, like if, I, if like, you know what I mean, like if it's thematically similar. Um, I don't think so because I don't think it's tells about the end of the world or anything sort of like that. I think they're just missing text from like the Bible or something like that. But okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Or, or from not, the Quran, it's not the or Bible; it's from the Quran, Quran, right? Yeah, Quran. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's yeah. I, I should probably look more into that. That's. Again, I'm sure it has nothing actually to do with the show, but it just seems interesting. Yeah. I mean, it, there must be, you know, they must have chosen it for a reason, right? Like exactly. they they could have chosen to make up an entire document themselves that didn't exist. So, but anyways, uh, back back on track. So we see uh, Toji. Um, I you know I think, again, I think on a rewatch you don't even really think about the fact that they're trying to surprise you with Toji's the pilot, so yeah. it doesn't really matter. But that being said. I know the first time I watched it, they're just so obvious with it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Evangelion's great. The storytelling's awesome. But they are, like, so obvious with Toji being the pilot. Like, for one thing, they keep talking about we're going to need a new pilot, and half the episode has scenes with Toji in it, which has yeah. not really been a thing in the show, especially lately. So it's kind of like, of course it's going to be Toji. Like, what – What did? I mean, it's not going to be Kinsuke, that's for sure. Um. But uh, so then we find out there was an incident in the U.S., by the way, this it says on the screen when they, it shows the incident uh, that it was in Nevada. Is that Area 51? It's got to be Area 51. It's yeah. got to be Area 51 because it looks like it's like kind of in the desert, kind of yeah. desolate. So, um, But anyways, to say the entire second branch vanished. Oh, this is something. This goes a little bit ahead. But um, I noticed later on they say that the first branch of Nerve is in the U.S. as well as the second branch, which has now vanished. Mm -hmm. So... What I'm I'm a little I'm a little confused on nerve. I feel like we sh I should probably know better considering we're on episode 17 of a podcast we're running, but I always think of nerve as like this thing that is here in Japan. Like this is where nerve is. Right. But the first branch and the second branch are over in the U.S. But this is nerve headquarters right. here in right. Japan, right? So this well, is gonna sound is really, this is gonna sound really stupid. I, apparently, I don't know how like things like this work. What's the difference between a headquarters and a branch? Is a, a branch just like a, I mean, like on a tree, like, you know, if it, I assume it's referring to a tree, like it's saying like, this is a kind of stemming going, off part of the, of the main trunk. I'm going to go off of purely off of the job place I work at. Our headquarters is in Boston, which is why we're called Boston Financial. Uh huh. But there's different branches like the one in Kansas City and the one here. We're all part of the same group. We're just in Right. So areas. that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's a tree. Like you're yeah. the trunk. The trunk is in Boston. But all the branches are stretching all over. Right. Okay. That makes sense. Sorry, sorry everybody for being really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> um, but I guess we've never claimed to be smart on this podcast. That is. Uh, I, I think, think we've proven. I think we've proven the opposite. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah. So so the branch. So the first and second branches, though. Like, wouldn't you think the first and second branches would be a little closer? It just seems weird to me that they're in the U.S. Like, how much? Because we never, you know, we aside from this episode, we never hear about the U.S. branches or what's going on right. over there. Apparently, there we're working on Evangelions. And, you know, there's well, obviously some kind of stuff happening in, like, maybe around Germany because like, that's where Asuka's from. I feel like at the time the show was written, America was still very much more of a powerhouse and army-wise. Yeah. So, obviously, you're going to have the headquarters take place in Japan because that's where the show's written. So, right. I guess it just probably makes sense that the other force would be, I guess, in the United States. That makes sense, especially because of the of the money here but yeah. i just feel like it just it just seems weird because it's from from what i would guess if somebody told me that like maybe the headquarters is over here but a bunch of the branches are over here i would assume that those branches are very important but they must not be because we never hear anything about them aside from this one episode right so that's just that's just kind of weird and i know like even galleon isn't a show about the whole world it's really kind of about this area and what's happening here but it does reference the whole world. So it's just interesting to me that we never, ever see any part of it, and we never hear about what's going on in any other part of the world. Yeah, because, I mean, you can see how much everything in this Japan area alone is, like, drastically different after the second effect. I think it would be really cool to see, well, how much it affect everything else as well. Yeah, like, yeah, definitely. Way. Yeah. Um, I understand you know, there's not that many episodes. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not That's not a complaint, but no, it's no, just... No, 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 no. It just feels weird that we never see even a glimpse of that. You know, occasionally we'll hear another character talk about it, like, oh, yeah, these 
these all these guys on the ship are from America or whatever, but that's not the same as seeing it. Right. I think it'd be, um, be cool just to have, like, an art book that shows kind of everything. Yeah, you know, now that I think about it, I kind of wish they would have done something like that in, like, the manga, because, right. you know, it, they, they worked on the manga for, like, an insane amount of time, or I guess the guy who wrote the manga did. Yeah. So, you know, it would have been cool if maybe they would have shown something else. Yeah. But, yeah, an, an art book would be cool or just, I don't know, something. Um, maybe 4.0 will just take place in, like, Australia oh. or Canada. Twin Towers Part 2. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> anyways, though, so, uh, yeah, back, we're, man, we're, we're uh, talking a lot, but not about the show right now. Um, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that was technically about the show, but it's not about the episode. Um, so, so the, the second branch vanishes into there they were working on an experimental s2 engine i think this is the first time we hear about the s2 engine on the show and um which i'm a little hazy on the s2 engine i believe that's essentially what all the angels run off of right because when uh unit one eats uh the angel in episode 19 they say it's taken the s2 engine into itself right um i think yeah but i don't know if that necessarily runs off him or that's what part, could have been part of the reason why it went wrong to think too because it was so experimental. Because I thought the S2 engine was kind of like the dummy plug thing. I don't think so. Because, I, well, I think what it is is, like, the S2 engine is what they call... It's not, like, a technical engine. It's what they call, like, the power source of the angels. Oh, okay. And but ex- experimental S2 engine is they tried to build their own. But okay. it's not, like... But I, this could be totally wrong. Uh, correct me, anybody, if you're listening. But I believe it's it's essentially the power source of the angels, like the core or whatever right. is, is maybe that. And they tried to build their own to get the angel or the the Avas right. to run off of it, but it didn't work. I don't That's think it's a literal engine in the way that we normally think of them. Here we go. An S two engine is an organ located within the core of the angel, which grants it limitless source of energy. Boom! Nailed it. Evangelians are not born with S two engines and are thus normally dependent upon energy supplied via power cable. All right. Here we go. Yep, I was right. Um, for once, <laughs> let let the record show. When this podcast is over, I was right one time. <laughs> Um, but what's interesting to me is they say that, uh, the second branch vanishing, it must have, uh, I don't remember the exact quote, but it must have like disappeared into another sea of Durak, which we saw in the last episode was the, the big negative energy, dark field space, whatever you want to call it, sea of Durak, uh, that the unit one disappeared into. So I can only assume that in trying to install this experimental S2 engine into the Evangelion, it somehow either recreated that angel or created a similar kind of organism that uh just you know collapsed the everything in the area uh, it's not an implosion i don't know what you'd really call it from a scientific perspective but uh it's gone um but uh yeah i don't know what else to say about that really uh that was unit four that that happened to and they the in the u.s they had built unit three and four and they had now decided we don't want three anymore because this is uh, bad. So they decide that they're going to send it to Nerve. Um, then we see uh, uh, Gendo and R- uh, yeah, Ritsuko talking about the dummy plug system a little bit more and it kind of explaining a little bit more of like what it is, that uh, like confirming that it's like essentially copies of Ray are in- installed into it and it's her, um, I, don't, I don't know, mental parameters or however you want to describe that. They uh, bring up that the, they're going to use a fourth child because the dummy plugs are a little unstable still at the moment and uh we jump ahead uh, Ray, uh toji has to go to ray's apartment to deliver her uh, uh mail or whatever or not mail homework. homework yeah and shinji decides to go with him even though uh the class rep whose name is hikari i learned uh wants to go with toji which would be weird like going to some girl's house on a date or whatever like i guess <laughs> it wouldn't be it wouldn't be a date but but uh shinji goes with them instead and shinji decides to pick up the whole apartment um, and then Ray comes back and says, thank you. Interesting character thing for Ray to say that, which she, uh, admits herself, like, mm-hmm. she's not somebody who would, who cares about, or cares or feels a need to have normal politeness or niceties, uh, and not even with Gendo does she do that. So, w- I think the line where she says, like, not even w- with him, referring to Gendo, is definitely another big line of confirming, like, there is a shift in Ray occurring with her loyalties, like... She obviously has a deeper connection with Shinji, or is developing a deeper connection with Shinji than she is with Gendo. Right. Um, 
Meanwhile, Toji stands around like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> um, just imagine, like, I know it's played kind of for a laugh, I think. Like, Toji's like, oh, I'm a tough guy. I'm not going to clean. But imagine going to someone's house. Or, like, a fr- not even going to someone's house. You have to go to someone's house, and a friend is like, I'll go with you, sure. And then you go to the house, and the friend is like, hey, I think I'm going to pick up a little bit. And you're like, I'm just going to sit here for an hour and stare at you. <laughs> Who does that? Like, yeah, no it, joke. I could understand being like, dude, I'm not going to clean their house. But after my friend is, like, doing it for, like, 20 minutes, and I'm just sitting in a chair, I'm probably going to eventually be like, well, I guess if we're just going to sit here, I might as well pick up. Like, what kind of asshole just sits there and continues to stare no at you? And like, But, uh... Um, I like that scene, too, because... Toji's like so worried about Ray walking in and like being worried. Ray just walks in and like just doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, like, that's, how do you yeah. walk into somewhere and have people in your apartment be like, oh hey guys, what's up? Yeah, but that's not even really like, shows, hey, like, what's up? Just like whatever. Yeah, Ray doesn't even care. Like she walks in and like wasn't even going to acknowledge the fact that they yeah. were there. Yeah, she is just like she she she's not surprised by it. She's nope. not questioning of it. Yeah, but that, that just shows you a little bit more of like. Ray's character is so bizarre. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's the same way that we saw in episode four, I think, when Shinji goes to give her her new pass, mm-hmm. and she, like, comes out of the shower naked. Normally, you know, normal reaction would be, like, oh, my God, get out, or, like, turn yeah. around or something. But Ray just, like, walks over casually and is, like, yeah. whatever. Like, she, there's not even a, like, what are you doing here? Um, well, I guess when you spend, like, a majority of your life in the tube being naked in front of an older man, <laughs> you're probably pretty used to that. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um... Uh, okay, I feel really stupid. I watched this episode last night, and I, f- I feel like I've already forgotten some of the information. I didn't write, I didn't take good notes. I wrote down wor- words and terms, but not what I was supposed to discuss about them. I just have Dead Sea Scrolls written down. Right. Gonna... I know. I know what you're gonna talk about because I I took good notes on that. Okay. <laughs> so uh, when they're on the train cart um, with Gindo and uh, what's the other guy's name, Doctor uh, Futsky. Futsky. They're um, talking about how Sailor's furious about the uh, branch disappearing. And right. Gendo just seems like nonchalant about it. And he's just like, well, why you don't you care? And he's just like, well, they're just pissed off because it, you know, it's going to upset their schedule. They didn't have it put on their schedule. And just kind of talks about, like, you know, they'll soon learn that not everything has to go exactly according to playing on the Dead Sea Scrolls kind of thing. Okay, yeah, that that's other right. things can kind of happen. They, yeah, that's the interesting thing about Gendo's character is I always am a little curious about exactly which things are part of his plan and which things have just happened randomly. Right. Because no matter what, his uh, his attitude never changes. Like it's never nervous or worried. It is always exceptionally cool and collected. Even when situations pop up, that's like there's no way Gindo could have planned for this. He still seems yeah. like eh, it's all part of the plan. And it's, I always wonder, like, is this part of the plan, or just, is he just like so chill about it, right? And and able to cope with any situation. So I wonder, like, with this, like, it kind of makes me wonder, like, Gindo isn't saying anything about maybe being responsible, but it, it kind of makes See? me wonder, like, maybe Gindo. Because he's he just I, he's not surprised by it. It's it's fine with his plan. It doesn't mess up his plan at all. I thought about that too. But how would he go about causing something like a Dirac C thing to happen? I have no idea. Um, I don't. I don't think he did. But it just kind of makes me wonder a little yeah, bit. Just yeah, yeah. Because just because of his response to it. Well, of course. I, I guess I I say that. But at the same time, I mean, they figure out how to use Ava and stuff like that. So I'm sure they figure out how to utilize other things as well. Yeah. So I don't know. It's crazy. Who knows? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, so then, uh, we get a scene of, uh, Kaji, uh, talking to several people and he gives, uh, Misato some information about, um, the Marduk report and Institute and saying like, it's not real. It's um, place. it's just like, he doesn't say it kind of like straight up here, but basically like every kid in Shinji school is yeah. a potential. And he hinted that a couple pilot. times in this episode. Uh, this is something I've never questioned before in the show, but, um, it seems like with the other pilots, like with Ray, I guess we don't know for sure if it's who is in Unit Zero, either Ray One or the original Doctor Akagi. Either way, there's a connection there. With mm-hmm. Shinji, of course, it's his mom. With Asuka, it's of course uh, a part of her mom. So, like, it always seemed to me like people sync correctly with uh, with their Avas when there's like a connection there. Right. So it just seems weird that like they have this entire batch of students that would have no. I think connection. it kind of comes down to your. Your optimal sync level is with the pilots now. But in case something happens to those pilots, you have to have a backup. And it might not be optimal sync level, but it's better than nothing, I guess. I guess that's true. Which I think and is it, kind of why they're trying to push the dummy plug system so much, because then they don't have to worry about that. That That's true, yeah, because uh, Ray is enough of a, like a clean slate. Right. That there's not that emotional thing mm-hmm. that it would interfere with the soul. Right. Um, 
but uh but i mean i would i mean there'd have to be a soul inside unit three as well right i assume yeah i, I mean assume. there has to be a soul in every evangelion I as far think. as i'm my knowledge goes yeah i think that's, I, that's yeah i believe you. i believe that's how that works um which makes anyways, you wonder about i mean not to get too far off this is, the mass produced davis well not only just mass produced Davis, but kind of like in the rebuilds i mean mari like it never really goes into how oh yeah i hadn't even thought about that yeah it's a good question um yeah, we should try to keep that in mind for whenever yeah. we eventually get there, because that's that would be something interesting to think about. Yeah, I haven't seen anybody try to guess about what. Yeah. Because she actually pilots uh, two different. Yep. Well, yep. three if you count when she pilots Oscars as well. That's true. But uh, of course we know who's in Oscars. That's presumably if it's the same person. That's true. Um, I guess we don't know for sure. Anyways, back to the, this episode. So then uh, Kaji talks a little bit with Shinji, and he takes him to his watermelon field. And give us some, some life advice. This is a this is a one of those great instances of um, sub versus dub, which I have a couple yes. we'll talk about later. But um, this one, <laughs> this sub makes sense. The dub seems so stupid because in the sub it's hey, do you want to go out for some tea? Like kind of like asking on a date. And so she's yeah. like, you do know I'm a boy, right? The dub is like, hey, can I can, buy you a drink? Can I, can cup I buy you a drink? tea? <laughs> cup of tea. And then Cindy's yeah. just like, I'm a boy. <laughs> yeah, I am. Um, I wa- I've been watching the sub, but that's a line that I'll always remember from the dub. Can yeah. I buy you a drink? drink? Cup of mm-hmm. tea? Because <laughs> it's the, so out of place. It's and, out like, of place. And the, awkward. Sin- the way Sinji talks about that is so, it's like so dumb. Like so matter of factly, like. I'm a boy. boy. <laughs> not even not even like it's a response to what he just said. Just like, hey, in case you didn't know, I'm a boy. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. Is it, it doesn't sound like it is a response. It just yeah. sounds like a random yeah. thing. When it's supposed to be like, you know, it's uh, it's supposed to work together. Uh, kind of like snarky. Like you do know I'm a guy, right? You know? Yeah, yeah. Um, That's probably why they changed it in the rebuilds. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think definitely. Um, but anyways, so yeah, they go out to the Kaji's watermelon patch. We see that he likes to grow things, and uh, he tells Shinji, you know, if you know pain or whatever, it's easier to be kind to others. Um, so there you go. There's some more life advice for everybody out there. Um, anything else about that scene? I, I, I guess. I mean, we could discuss what it means about Kaji's character that he grows watermelons, but... Um, I mean, I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a soft side. I, I don't know. He's he's patient, methodical. I, I don't know. Um, then we see uh, Shinji talking to Kinsuke, and Kinsuke tells him about all the stuff that happened in America, and also tells him that there's a new Evangelion coming, and there will be a new pilot selected. Um... The interesting thing is that Shinji had no idea about any of this information. Uh, Misato had not told him anything about it. And Kensuke kind of tries to reassure him, be like, well, I don't know, you know, it's not like you need to know, so maybe they just didn't think they needed to tell you. Yeah. But clearly, like, Shinji probably should have been told that. Because yeah. um, that's, I mean, you know, I, I, we, uh, it's, it's clear in the episode why he hasn't learned about uh, the pilot yet, because Misato does know that, and she's trying to decide the best time to tell him. But it seems a little odd that he hasn't heard anything about the incident in America yet. I would assume that that would be... A, you know, big talk at Nerve. Um, but, again, I mean, Kensei's kind of right. Like, there is no need to tell Shinji. Not really. I would just assume he kind of would have overheard it. Um, but they could be trying to withhold the information from him because, you know, he already has issues piloting Ava's as it is if he learns that there is an Ava that, like, destroyed an entire facility and wiped out tons and tons of staff. Right. And Yeah. Yeah, I could understand why you might. And they're going to have your best, one of your best friends pilot it, you know. Yeah. So then we see um, Hikari talking to Toji. This is, you know, I think this scene is just kind of purely put in there to play up the tragedy of what happens in the next episode. Yeah, oh, this is like totally like a forced romance thing they're trying to do. Yeah, uh, it definitely seems to come out of nowhere, but uh, whatever. Um, I'll give it a pass. But uh, yeah, she says, you know, I'll make you lunches or I don't know, whatever. Um, and this is another thing, um, too. Uh, back to like dub versus sub the voice actor for uh toji and the sub is like so much more not a douche than he is in the (laughs) dub like his voice actor in the dub is just so like loud and like kind of cocky i guess it's Um, almost to the point where it's hard to like distinguish himself from uh the other what's that other kid's name kinsuke kinsuke yeah because there's not that real nasally kind of like loud voice yeah yeah, it, it's just, I don't know. It just they just sound so like non-human. Like nobody talks like that. Exactly. You know? um, but whatever. Uh, so then we also see Asuka goes and tries to visit Kaji, 
and uh, is kind of rejected by him, but then she finds out who the pilot is because she looks at his monitor. Um, this episode was a lot different this time than the first time I saw this because I remember being like really, I was like kind of excited. I was like, oh, cool. They're going to add one more pilot. It's going to be like really cool doing badass fights and stuff like that. And yeah. And does any X episode <laughs> throw that out the window? Like, I was yeah, not expecting it. I really liked that though. Me too. Um, I, you know, I, I love any show that like, just doesn't do what you expect. And I mean, that's really what the whole show of Evangelion is. I mean, nobody could watch the first episode and guess what episodes 25 and 26 are going to be like from that. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it is really cool because it's like, it feels like, because I mean, Toji and Kitsuke were kind of ancillary characters we introduced really early on and we haven't really done anything with. So it's like, oh, okay, we're finally going around and like going to make these people characters. And even like the class rep seems like she's going to be more of a character. She's going to be in love with Toji. And then the next episode is like, nope, not happening. (laughs) And then after the next episode, like we don't see those characters at all. Nope. Um, it just so yeah, really that, builds really up your typical expectation of how anime goes, and it yeah. just throws it out the window. Yeah, which is great. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Um, but yeah, I think even though like we don't really get a lot of, I mean, there, obviously there's no action. This episode's really just setting up for the next episode. But um, this episode, as well as the last episode, like really making me, I think, appreciate the show even more. Yeah. Um, you know, I've always obviously really like the show. That's why we're doing a rewatch podcast of it, but like watching it now and like really super analyzing everything, I think is really making me like the show on like a whole nother level that I hadn't really right. thought about before. Um, not that I'm necessarily discovering new information. I kind of still, still pretty much everything I knew before, but I don't know. It's just like, it's looking at it a whole different way. Um, but yeah, I'm, re- I'm really liking it. I think yeah, me too. It's th- this is a show that just really benefits from multiple viewings mm-hmm. and discussion about it. So hopefully, if anybody, you know, to people out there listening, hopefully you're listening to this and uh, enjoying the show a little bit yeah. differently than you have before. Um, hopefully no one's watching this and, like, it's ruining the show for you. <laughs> <laughs> that one also sucks. Um, but, uh, yeah, we have anything else to talk about? That's pretty uh, much the episode. Uh, yeah, I had some things I kind of was going to add just on the dub versus something kind of thing again. Okay. The part when um, Misato and Ritsuko are talking about – they find out who the next pilot's going to be. Yeah. There's, like, some really big difference between what they talk about on the dub and the sub, which I think is kind of weird because the sub part, what they have for the subtitles sound way more important than they make it sound when they do the dub. Like, for Asuka's character, like, in the sub, they say Asuka's pride rests on her piloting the Ava, and then in the dub, they just say, oh, she's a committed pilot. <laughs> wow, they have it. That is different, yeah. And then uh, for Ray, they're like, Ray is an exception, and then in the dub, they say, well, Ray's exceptional pilot. It's like, well, that's really different. Like, an exception and exceptional is like, that's two different things. Yeah, man, that, that is somebody who translated that that didn't know what those two words meant. Yeah. <laughs> they were and like, then, oh, these words sound the same. And then for um, Shinji, they're like, before they don't even mention this part at the beginning part. They're like, nothing as good as ever come from us piloting the Avas. Shinji understands this better than anyone. They don't even really mention, they just kind of like mention one sentence about Shinji. It's like, those are like really kind of deep statements about the characters, and you just glaze yeah. over them. And it, yeah, the, those kind of s- briefly summarize each character in the yeah, sub. Yeah, really. And in the dub, they don't at all. Uh, no, not even close. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, we've said this before, but I'm watching the sub for the very first time ever. I've only ever watched the dub, and I've watched the show several times. And you've only ever watched the dub, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, I, um, I, when I first started watching, I watched dub, then switched dub. Okay. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, pretty much with any anime, I think, especially with Evangelion, but really with any anime, people always uh, advocate the sub over the dub. Yeah. But I, I think, you know, just being two, uh, like, young white men in Kansas, <laughs> <laughs> we've just, we kind of always watched the dub because, you know, of the aforementioned description of ourselves. I mean, um, one of the reasons I watch it is because when I'm watching anime or doing something, I'm typically doing something else. Oh and really? If I'm not reading the subtitles, I'm gonna miss what's going on. So, there are there. I mean, there's definitely some shows that like are so heavy on action and things happening. Yeah, it is a little straining to constantly have to read stuff. I'm, I'm not against subtitles. I watch no, a lot of movies with subtitles. Yeah. It's just like, um, there's just certain shows that like if the action is like really fast and furious or the visuals are so like incredibly done, I want to watch those. Exactly. And I don't want to have to take my eyes off of how good the show looks. So. I kind of feel like I'm almost having to like pause and like read real quick. Um, not that I'm, yeah, not that I'm not a fast reader or anything, but like it, it's just it's a different experience. Yeah. But um, now that we're kind of comparing them, you definitely do see more of like why people really. 
Well, push that, that's for also the too sub. kind of assuming the subs we have are actual more pr- like accurate. Yeah, I, th- I assume they're pretty close. Yeah. Um, I, I you know there's probably some mistranslation, but I assume they're pretty close. Um, they might even be the exact correct thing. Yeah, and if they're the exact correct thing, I mean, then the show it definitely goes more deeper into what makes Evan Gilly good rather than just kind of like glazing over things that are kind of important facts. Yeah. Like, uh, I think in here it mentions that in the sub that it's like logging the data to one of the, oh, Magi. I can't remember what, it actually names it specifically. Uh, in this episode? Yeah. When they're doing some, they're doing the uh, sync test. And then on the dub, they don't even, that's something they don't even bother talking about. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't remember that. Um, like, not that it's, like, that important to people. It's kind of like a thing. It's like, oh, here, they mentioned the Magi again. And the dub's just like, oh, that's not important. Yeah, that stuff is, is interesting. Um, and, of course, you know, I think a lot of people have a problem with the dub because of the voice acting. Yeah, uh, was, which, just, is, yeah. which is understandable. I think you and me are more willing to give stuff like that a bit of a pass. Yeah. Um, then I think some people will. Some people are very unforgiving about that. To me, it's not the end of the world if the voice acting isn't great, especially on an older show because voice act. I understand that in the 90s, anime was not taken seriously here in America. So when stuff was dubbed, I guess this was probably dubbed in like the early 2000s here. But when stuff was dubbed in that time period, nobody was trying to be voice good voice actors. Yeah. So I'm, I'm willing to like cut it a break. But uh, I, I do think even though a lot of the cast is the same, I actually think the dub in the rebuild movies is done really well. I was well. going to say that too. It's really, really good. Yeah, because that's what I, I should say. When I said we don't mind watching the dub of the show, I didn't mean it was good or well voice <laughs> yeah, acted. Yeah, yeah. I just mean that it, it doesn't really bother us. Exactly. But it is actually, I think, legitimately more well done in the. In I was, was going to make the same camera. Yeah, they think they're rebuilt. That's why I'm looking so forward to 3.0 because I really want to watch it dub because I like hearing the voice actors perform because I, I think they've done really good the rebuilds. Yeah, I haven't watched uh, 3 dubbed ever. I've only yeah. seen the sub because I didn't see it when it was in theaters. I still um, can't believe it was taking so long because I watched it and it was pretty accurate to the subtitle version that I watched. Yeah, well, that's the thing too is like, you know, part of the problem is like there's mistranslations and stuff, but it seems like with, with Funimation doing the the rebuilds, they're not messing that up. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of the time, or with, with, when the original show was translated here, I think, I'm not sure who translated it, but I think they were okay with taking some liberties and i don't think funimation is about that funimation likes to get things exactly right yeah which is why i couldn't believe they had issues with it yeah that's interesting um i wonder if we'll ever get the full story on that Um, yeah instead of just hearing like rumors and like scraps of information Um, i'm really speculating too that funimation is going to do something cool to make up for it taking so long hopefully i just hope that i still get it even though i pre-ordered on amazon and not funimation.com oh yeah yeah i don't know because um, I've had that, it's been over a year since I pre-ordered. I know that for a fact because Amazon gave me a notification, like, "Hey, are you sure you still want to have this pre-ordered?" And I was like, yes. um, "Yeah." Well, I mean, still, like we said last week, but that's why I'm not getting too excited about the show on Blu-ray. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I I want the show on Blu-ray. I would be extremely excited if I knew I'd get it. But I think it's relatively safe to assume, since they're getting all the licensing rights to the the rebuilds, that Funimation will try to get the licensing rights to the show here in the states. Yeah. Um. And so hopefully they'll release it good. Hopefully by that time they'll have a better working relationship with the company, so it'll be a lot more quicker. But yeah, hopefully they'll learn from this. Yeah. Because um, I also would like eventually when 4.0 comes out to not have to wait forever for it. And it's it's one thing to take as long as it's taking. It's entirely another thing to like give us no information about it at all. Yeah, it's really no strange. I, I assume there's a reason that they can't. Yeah. Um, but I can't imagine what it would be. Um, it must be some like really specific, bizarre thing. The m- last recent thing I ever heard about it was someone who I think the person who does voice acting for Shinji or whatever, he released a schedule of, like stuff he's voice acting and that was on, on there like reshooting that was on there. So at least oh. I, I'm assuming it is being done. Hmm. Yeah. That I don't know. We'll just have to. Well, I guess we probably will never get the full story, but we'll just have to wait and hopefully get the Blu-ray soon. Um, cause it's almost been a year since it was in theaters here, right? Yeah. It went in theaters in January when I saw like January 10th. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, did you have anything else, uh, on your notes? No, that's it. All right, cool. Well, uh, thanks for watching everybody. Next week, we're going to check out the exciting conclusion to this two part story. Probably have a lot to talk about yeah, on next week's good. episode. This, this episode actually wasn't too short. But I think we're actually going to have like a lot. We'll try to get through it quick and not get distracted like we did in this episode. But I don't think that's going to be a problem because we will have a lot to talk about. For sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know, make sure you watch it. Get familiar, whatever, as always. 
Uh, you can email us, uh, send us messages, whatever. Um, uh, uh, you know, we, we've, we got some more comments like saying we like your show and stuff. Thank, thanks you to anybody who says that. We really appreciate that stuff. Um, and uh, I hope you guys uh, – I don't. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what that. I don't know what the second part of that sentence was going to be. Have a good week. Thanks for watching, everybody. <laughs> see, see you next week. Bye, guys.